I'm Reverend Greg and I welcome you to this video in the tutorial series Shaders for Hobby Programmers. Today we are enhancing our Luma Mask Dissolve Shader again. While in the last video we added this two colored rim, we'll now add a ramp texture to create this fiery dissolve shader instead. If you haven't watched the previous videos on Luma Masks, this one might be really hard to understand though. You might consider watching those to understand what's happening here or at the very least the first video on Luma Mask Basics. Also mind that this version might not work on older mobile devices since we'll need three textures in the shader to create this effect and some older devices will only handle two textures at the same time. But I have no clue how many mobiles wouldn't be able to and what would happen if they try running this shader. But as always a short disclaimer first. The tutorial series is mainly for hobby programmers who struggle with understanding shaders. I'm not a professional programmer and I'm not very good at maths so if you see a mistake in my video or see a better way to solve a problem please add a comment so everyone can learn from you. Let's once more start by looking at how we are going to create this effect. These are two mask sprites. A simple gradient mask and a cloud-like mask. Like in the last video, I think some explanations are just easy to understand with the gradient, but the cloud is what makes this look fiery. With the time 40% into the animation, this is what our basic dissolve shader from the first video would look like. Every fragment where the mask value is 0.4 or less is visible already, and every fragment with a higher mask value is invisible still. And this is what our shader will look like at the end of this video. Usually when drawing a sprite we send just one texture to the shader and that's GM base texture. In our basic dissolve shader we've sent a second texture, the luma mask, into the shader. But now to achieve this effect we'll need to send a third texture to the shader, this ramp texture. The sprite is only one pixel high and a few pixels wide, in this example 16 pixels wide and will have to be on its own texture page. If I move, stretch and rotate the sprite onto the examples it gets easier to understand what's happening here. You can see this color ramp is somehow layered over the effect. But let's have a step by step approach again. First the effect size. In the first video we called the uniform tolerance but like in the last video I'll call it rim size in this shader. Again, rim size is not measured in pixels or UVs, it's a bandwidth of values on the mask. Every fragment with a mask's value within that bandwidth is part of the rim. Every fragment with a mask value above that bandwidth is invisible, and every fragment with a mask value below that bandwidth is just the base sprite's color. The uniform time will animate the effect. At time 0 the base sprite will be invisible and at time 1 the base sprite will be fully visible. This snapshot was taken at time 0.4. Now inside the fragment shader will transform time to time x, so time x will range from 0 to 1 plus rim size. Rim size of this snapshot is 0.6 which means time x will go from 0 to 1.6. This also means at time 0.4 time x will be 0.64. Next we'll need to take the samples on our three textures. The base sprite sample is as usually taken at VV text code and since this code is based on the Luma mask version of the second video the mask sample is taken at VV mask code. This part is simple. A bit more complicated is taking the sample on the ramp texture. The sprite will be on a separate texture page. Its width in pixels has to be a power of 2, in this case 16 pixels and it's only one pixel high. This means the UV coordinates of this sprite range from 0, 0 to 1, 0. Now we need to find out what color from the ramp texture the current fragment should get. If rim size describes the value bandwidth of the rim, and if time x describes where this bandwidth currently starts, and if mask val describes how the current fragment is affected by the color ramp by comparing it with rim size and time x, then we can get a texture coordinate for that ramp texture. The fact that the ramp sprite's U coordinate ranges from 0 to 1 and the fact that smooth step returns a value from 0 to 1 as well lets us solve this problem pretty easily. The sample position on the ramp texture is smooth step from mask wall to mask wall plus rim size at time x. And with that coordinate we can get a sample from the ramp texture at the UV coordinates U, ramp pos and V0. But let's make an example. Rim size as mentioned in this example is 0.6, time is 0.4 and thus time x is 0.64. If time x is smaller than mask val then ramp pos is 0. 
The ramp collar sample will be taken at the coordinates 0, 0 and thus the ramp collar for this fragment is the leftmost pixel on the ramp texture. Now since that pixel has an alpha of 0 and that's really important, this means all fragments with a mask value of more than time x, so more than 0.64, will be invisible. And if time x is greater than mask val plus rim size, then ramp pos will be 1. So the ramp color sample will be taken at the coordinates 1, 0, and thus the ramp color for this fragment is the rightmost pixel on the ramp texture. This means if time x is 0.64 and rim size 0.6, then all fragments with a mask value of 0.04 or less will get the color of the rightmost pixel on the ramp and in the later step will set that color to the base sprite color. But if time x is between mask val and mask val plus rim size, then ramp pos will be something between 0 and 1. So the ramp color sample will be taken somewhere between the leftmost and rightmost pixel on the ramp texture. This means all fragments with a mask value from 0.04 to 0.64 in our example will get a color somewhere on the ramp and the lower the mask value, the more to the right on that ramp texture they're going to be. Let's say the current fragment has a mask value of 0.3, so a rather dark gray like about here. Then ramp pos would be smooth step from mask value 0.3 to mask value plus rim size, so 0.9 at time x 0.64, that's about 0.55. This means at time 0.4, with the rim size of 0.6, the fragments with a mask value of 0.3 will receive the ramp color at u 0.55 v0. I hope that part was understandable enough because I really don't know how else to explain this. The math is easy enough, but although I wrote this code myself, I still have to focus quite a bit when thinking about how those variables work together. Anyways, so far our code ignores the base sprite collar. So we need to somehow mix the ramp collar with the base sprite collar, but only inside the rim, not outside. And to do that, we need to tell the shader which part of the ramp texture needs to blend with the base sprite. To do so, we'll add a new uniform called no blend ratio. What we're doing here is tell the shader how many percent of the ramp texture are not going to be blended with the base sprite. In our example, pixels 1 to 7 are the fire and smoke. Those pixels shouldn't be blended with the base sprite. Whereas pixels 8 to 16 are inside the effect and should be blended with the base sprite. So 7 out of 16 pixels should not be blended and thus in our example the uniform no blend ratio would have to be 7 over 16. So to blend, we're going to mix the RGB values of the ramp color and the base color by blend weight. That's straightforward. Calculating the blend weight is just a tiny bit more complicated though. We're going to smooth step again. The lower edge is the mask's value plus the non-blending part of the rim size. The upper edge is the mask's value plus rim size. And the value to compare of course once more is time x. So if time x is smaller than the mask's value plus the non-blending part of the rim size, then blend weight is 0 and thus the color will be the ramp color we retrieved earlier. And if time x is greater than the mask's value plus rim size, then blend weight is 1 and the color will be the base sprite sample color. So if time x is between those two, the color will be a smooth stepped mix. Next we'll need to determine the alpha of the fragment. And this is going to be rather simple again. We want all fragments in the area where the ramp is blended with the base sprite and all fragments further away from the rim to get the base sprite's alpha. However, in the non-blending area and outside the rim, we want the alpha to be the ramp color's alpha. In our example, that's the alpha of pixels 1 to 7. Pixel 1 has to have an alpha of 0. Pixel 2's alpha is about 0.3. Pixel 3's alpha is about 0.7 and the alpha of pixel 4 to 7 is 1. But we cannot just ignore the base sprite's alpha in this area or the fire and smoke could be drawn even if the base sprite has no alpha there. So we need to multiply the ramp color's alpha with the base sprite's alpha. To determine which it should be, the base sprite's alpha or the base sprite's alpha times the ramp color's alpha will need some kind of toggle. I'm using a step function for this. If no blend ratio is smaller than ramp pos, then the weight is 0 and thus the fragment's alpha will be the base sprite's alpha. 
and if no blend ratio is greater than the ramp pos, then the fragments alpha will be the ramp colors alpha times the base sprites alpha. And with RGB and A calculated, we can finally set the output color. I know this explanation isn't perfect and it's kind of tricky to fully understand what's happening, but I seriously didn't find any better way to explain this. I hope though it's good enough for most viewers. But anyways, it's time to switch to GMS once again to create this effect for real now. First of all, we're going to base this on the version with remapped UVs from the second video on Luma masks. Not on the very basic version from the first video with a separate texture page and not on the two colored rim version from the last video. So let's duplicate object luma mask mixed text remapped UVs. Name it object luma mask color ramp mixed text remapped UVs and place it on the main layer of our test room. We'll also need a duplicate of shader luma mask mixed text remapped UVs and name the duplicate shader luma mask color ramp mixed text remapped UVs. And finally, we'll need some sprites. As base sprite, I've imported this square mockup menu sprite. As mask, I'll use this cloud sprite. If you are using the UV remapping code as I do, then both these sprites can be on mixed texture pages and can be of different sizes and shapes. And as a ramp sprite, I'll use this gradient here. The ramp needs to be on a separate texture page and that sprite's width needs to be a power of 2. In my case, it's 16. Also, the first pixel needs to be completely transparent. I even added a second frame with a bluish glow gradient, but you don't really have to. I'll just use the fire to fade out and the glow to fade in. That's all preparation we need, so let's start coding. The object first. In Create Event, I'm changing the module's info text. As shader, we'll need to set the new version which is created. Shader Luma Mask Color Ramp Mixed Text Remapped UVs. As sprite, I'm going to set the square mockup menu and as mask, a cloud mask. We'll still need the mask texture and mask transform vector and the uniform handles for those. But now we'll also have to prepare the ramp texture. So I'll store the ramp sprite ID in the local variable ramp, the ramp texture ID in the instance variable ramp text fire, and add a uniform handle u ramp text for the ramp texture ID. Earlier I showed that my ramp texture has two frames. That's not absolutely needed for this effect, I just wanted to use a different color ramp when fading in than when fading out. To achieve this, we'll need to get the texture ID of the second frame as well. I'll store it in the variable ramp text glow, and we'll need to store which texture is currently active, the fiery or the glowing one. So I'll add the variable ramp text and initialize by setting it to the glow ramp. And as mentioned in the introduction, I'll change tolerance variables to rim size like in the last video. We can leave the uniform handles for time and inversion. And to tell how much of the ramp shouldn't be blended with the base sprite, we'll need a new uniform handle, U no blend ratio, and a variable to store that ratio. As seen in the introduction, our ramp is 16 pixels wide, and the first 7 shouldn't be blended. So no blend ratio is 7 over 16. And the rest of create event can stay the same. The same goes for the step event. Nothing to change here. We'll need to change a few things in the draw event though. First I want to swap the ramp texture at animation start and end, so whenever time is 0 or 1. Then we need to change tolerance to rim size again. And then we'll need to pass the ramp texture to the shader like we did with the mask texture. And set the uniform U blend ratio. And that's it for the draw event for now. So let's open shader luma mask color ramp mixed text remapped UVs. We won't need to change the vertex shader. All we did here is create a remapped coordinate system for the mask texture and we won't need one for the ramp. So let's just close the vertex shader. 
there's a lot to do in the fragment shader. First, let's delete the only part we won't need at all, the line where we smooth-stepped mask val. Then we can again replace tolerance with rim size. And then we'll need to add the new uniforms, uniform sampler 2D ramp text to get the ramp texture and uniform float no blend ratio. Next we'll need to get the fragments position on the ramp texture. Float ramp pos is smooth step from mask wall to mask wall plus rim size at time x. And then the color sample at that position. VEC4 ramp color is the sample color and ramp text at VEC2 ramp pos and zero. Then we can mix the RGB of the base sprite and the ramp. First the float blend weight, which is a smooth step from mask valve plus the no blend part of the rim size to mask valve plus rim size at time x. And then base call RGB is a mix of ramp call RGB and base call RGB at blend weight. And the alpha value of the fragment. Float alpha weight is step of ramp pos and no blend ratio. And base call dot A is a mix of base call dot A and ramp call dot A times base call dot A at alpha weight. And finally the output GL frag caller, which now is just base call. Now I just need to fix a tiny mistake I didn't notice earlier. I wrote mask call instead of mask val. And this should be it. So let's run this for the first time. So this works. We can change the size, and you'll see with a rather large size this looks like a fire, and with a small rim size this looks like embers. And the automation switches the ramp texture whenever time reaches 0 or 1. If you look closely, you'll notice there's no interpolation between the ramp colors though. If you're doing a pixel art game, this might be what you want, but for everything else, some interpolation would probably look better. It's a very quick fix though, we just need to add two lines in draw event. Before drawing we can set the interpolation of the ramp texture to true. And after drawing I'll just reset all filters to false again. And running this again will show us the effect with smooth transitions from color to color. That's it already. Not too complicated and if you followed this tutorial series you'll notice there was absolutely nothing new in this video. We just reused things we already learned. Anyways, next time I'd like to show how to create interesting masks in image manipulation programs. I hope to show them all in GIMP but I'm not sure yet. Still experimenting there. Until next time.